Hi, this is a quick video just explaining in slightly more detail interactions and main effects in factorial analysis of variance. So this is a new concept for you in your second year research methods, uh, something that you haven't had to worry about with one-way ANOVA. So this is only for factorial ANOVA when we have to examine main effects and interactions. Now this is typically a sticking point for most students, so first things first, don't worry about this. Uh, many students struggle to understand main effects and interactions and I'm hoping that this video will help somewhat with that uh, confusing topic for you. If you do have any questions regarding anything in this video or on the module feel free to drop me an email uh, with this email address here. But really practice does make perfect with understanding uh, these concepts so uh, grab a few journal articles and look at the plots and try and understand uh, for yourself whether there are main effects and interactions in the data that you're looking at. So we're going to walk through a very simple example. Uh, it's just a two by two example, so a two factor experiment examining the effect of sleep deprivation and caffeine on memory. So our first factor is sleep deprivation. That is, we either deprive participants of sleep for only one hour, which is pretty much nothing, or a, a full 24 hours. We have a sec second factor which is type of supplement. So for some group of participants we give them a caffeine pill and for a second group of participants we give them a placebo pill. So it's a two by two design because we have two levels in one factor and two levels in the other factor. So we have the data here and this is just made up data but it, it will uh, suffice for this example. So whenever you're presented a plot, the first thing you should do is try and orient yourself regarding the axes and what the data are actually showing before you actually try and work out whether there are main effects or interactions. So we see that we have sleep deprivation on the x-axis with our two levels, 1 hour and 24 hours, and the separate lines represent the type of supplement that we gave to participants. So the dark circles reflect the data for the caffeine group, and the open circles reflect the data for the placebo group. And we have percent correct uh, on the y-axis. So this was a memory experiment and we're just interested in the percent that participants got in each of these conditions. So in a two-way ANOVA, what you'll be looking for are two main effects and to examine whether there's an interaction between the two factors. And we'll walk through each of these right now. So the first question to ask is, is there a main effect of sleep deprivation? The best way to think of a main effect is to think of it as the effect of the levels of one factor whilst ignoring the levels of the other factor. So we're interested for this first uh, topic whether there's a main effect of sleep deprivation. So we're interested in whether the data for one hour differs from the data for 24 hours. So we want to ignore whether the data came from the caffeine group or the placebo group initially. So the first thing we do is we want to work out uh, what the average of these two scores here are. So the average for the caffeine and placebo group at one hour of sleep deprivation. So if we represent that as just a red star. Now the other thing we want to do is work out the, uh, the average performance for 24 hours. But remember again we're ignoring whether it came from the caffeine or the placebo group. So we want to find the average of these two points here which is roughly about here. I mean, this is just hand-drawn, but it's roughly. So what the main effect of sleep deprivation is just asking whether these two points are different. That is, is the average performance for one hour different from the average performance of 24 hours? So we're really ignoring from which group of uh, supplement these data came from. So this is what the main effect of sleep deprivation is doing. It's examining the, uh, the effect of sleep deprivation whilst ignoring the levels of the other factor. So the second question to ask is whether there's a main effect of supplement. So in a similar fashion we want to ex examine the, uh, the average performance for the caffeine group and for the placebo group whilst ignoring the levels of the other factor. So we don't want to uh, consider whether it came from the one hour group or the 24 hour group. So if we consider the caffeine group first, we want to find the average performance for this group. So it would be roughly in the centre here. And now we want to find the average performance for the placebo group, ignoring whether it came from the 1 hour or the 24 hour. So that's roughly about here. So what this analysis is doing is just asking whether these two average 
averages are different. So we're examining the effect of caffeine and placebo whilst ignoring the effect of sleep deprivation. So that's what the main effect of supplement is doing. So you can see it's pretty straightforward. Obviously the, uh, the mathematics behind it are much more complicated than this and m more involved, but we don't need to worry about that just to understand what the analysis is actually doing. Okay, so now we've examined whether there's a main effect of, um, of sleep deprivation and we've just examined whether there's a main effect of the type of supplement that we've ga uh, we gave the participants. Now we want to know whether these two factors interact. So is there an interaction here? What this is really asking is whether one factor affects the performance in the other factor. That is, do the levels of one factor alter performance across the levels of the other factor? So this is a little bit tricky to get your head around, so we'll walk through this as slowly as possible. And uh, Like I said, uh, just drop me an email or come and see me if you have any questions at all. So. Interactions really are just an examination of a difference of differences. So we see that for the caffeine group we have a difference between the one hour level and the 24 hour level of the other factor sleep deprivation and you'll see that this difference is relatively small here. It's about 10. So the difference for the caffeine group between performance in the one hour condition and the 24 hour condition is about 10%. But what we want to examine is whether this difference is different from the difference in the other level of the supplement. Okay, so this is a bit of a mouthful, so I'll try and explain it uh, slightly differently. So we can see overall that performance is worse at 24 hours than at one hour. Okay, and this just makes sense that if you're uh, if you're deprived of sleep for 24 hours, your attention and memory is just going to be worse than it is. Uh, with basically no sleep deprivation. But what we're trying to examine here is whether caffeine in any way alleviates this difference. So we have the difference for the caffeine group of about 10 and the difference of the placebo group of about 75. And what the interaction is asking is whether this difference of 10 is different from this difference of 75. So we see that in the caffeine group the difference of performance between one hour sleep deprivation and 24 hours is only about 10%. But the difference between one hour performance and 24 hour performance for the placebo group is 75%. So it's a, a huge difference here. So with uh, no caffeine at all, your performance really deteriorates after 24 hours. However, for the caffeine group, the performance does drop, but not as drastically as in the placebo group. So we could conclude here that because there, is an, there seems to be an interaction, that is, this difference is different from this difference, so this means that there is an interaction, we could conclude that caffeine is alleviating the negative effects of sleep deprivation somewhat. So this is quite a tricky thing to get your head around, so I do appreciate that these interactions are, are quite complex, but just try and remember it's the examination of whether the levels of one factor influence performance across the levels of the other factor. And we can see that it does, because the difference in performance between 1 hours and 24 hours is really dictated by whether you had caffeine or placebo. If you're in the caffeine group, there's not much difference between performance, whereas if, in your, if you're in the placebo group, there's a huge difference. Performance really deteriorates across 24 hours. So that's what uh, the interaction is asking. So that's all there is to it really. I'm going to quickly work through all this example again from the beginning but just very very quickly just to refresh what we did and hopefully you'll come away with this with a, a slightly better understanding of main effects and interactions. So we first had this data set. So one group of participants was given caffeine, another group was given placebo and we tested participants either at one hour or at 24 hours of sleep deprivation. We first wanted to ask whether there was a main effect of sleep deprivation. So a main effect examines performance across the levels of the factor we're interested in whilst ignoring the levels of the other factor. That is, we want to find the average performance at one hour, the average performance at 24 hours, and just ask whether these two are different. And we can see that there is a main effect of sleep deprivation. Performance drops with 24 hours of sleep deprivation. 
Likewise, we want to ask whether there's a main effect of supplement. So we're interested in the difference in performance between the levels of the supplement factor whilst ignoring the levels of the sleep deprivation factor. That is, we find the average performance for the caffeine group, the average performance for the placebo group, and we just ask whether these two are different. And here we'd say that there is a main effect of supplement because performance is generally better in the caffeine group than in the placebo group. Is there an interaction? This examines whether the levels of one factor influence performance across the levels of another factor. Remember, it's a difference of differences. So we already know that performance drops across uh, as sleep deprivation increases, but does this rate of deprivation change depending on whether you're given a ca caffeine pill or a placebo group? So here's the difference for the caffeine group. It's not very, very large, but for the placebo group, the detriment to performance is much, much larger. So this difference of 10 is likely to be significantly different from this difference of 75. So we'd say that there is an interaction here. So I hope this video has cleared up uh, some misgivings about main effects and interactions. I hope you found it useful. If you have any questions, do drop me an email. And uh, thank you very much.